Alright, hello YouTube. Just want to get on here uh, and just talk about. Uh, well, I think what I'm going to do is start a new. Call it a series. Um, name it something clever like. Uh, I don't know. Car Ride Conversations. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. I like that. I'll go with that one. Uh, so I just wanted to to talk about some things that, that kind of bother me. And I apologize for the shakiness of the camera. I am driving. Um, it's going to be a kind of a tour from work video series. Car Ride Conversations. Uh, I, this, is what bob, it, this is what bugging me. I, I don't understand why there's so much division among Christians who are all looking for our blessed hope. We're all looking for that day that we're supposed to go home. I, you know, I, I don't understand why people argue, I'm right. No, you're wrong. I'm right. No, it's this way. No, it's this way. No, you're misinterpreting it. It's this way. When we should all know that the Lord speaks to everybody differently. So what's right for the Lord to show you in your understanding and how you see things and understand things may not be right for how I get them or how I understand them. And many of us know this, but then when we're having conversations with people, it seems to go out the window and we totally forget about it. And we go to a, a me mentality and I'm right, you're wrong. And it's just, uh, you know, we need to be uniting. Cause I, I mean, look, look at someone who's from the outside world looking at, you know, I mean, that the mockers and scoffers really look, look at them laughing at us. Look at you know, this is what they say, you know, you dumb Christians, you're arguing with each other about, you know, when when uh, Jesus is coming back or when he's going to come get you. And you don't even know, you know, you're, you're too busy arguing with each other. You can't even unite. So, you know, wh why, if that was you, why why would anyone want to be, become a Christian or, or to look towards Jesus when all we do is argue with each other? You know what I mean? It seems to be ridiculous. I... You know, personally, I I see. Here's what I see, and it's it's really really cool. I know, and listen to people who believe in pre-trib, you know, pre-rapture tribulation, people who believe in mid, and people who believe in post. And for the most part, this is what's really cool to me. For the most part, they're all looking at now the now time frame this may 26 blood moon up until the june 10th eclipse that's where everyone's looking now don't get me wrong there's definitely people who fall in the in the mid and post category who are expecting tribulation to start or maybe just started and are expecting to be here you know if they're mid for another three years three and a half years four years you know they're expecting the tribulation to start or maybe just it already started with covid and, you know, for post-trip, you know, they're, they're looking to be here for another seven years or, you know, what have you, 14 years. I think there's a lot of evidence to show for a 14-year um, unveiling apocalypse, you know, maybe a seven-year tribulation, but a 14-year apocalypse. I think there's good indications for a 14-year tribulation, you know, seven seals, seven trumpets. Uh, again, we don't need to argue, you know, we're all looking. So, but anyway, I, I follow... Uh, a few people who believe in mid-trib, but are suggesting that tribulation started in 2017. So they're looking at now. They're looking at the escape now. Um, and I follow some uh, post-trib believers who are uh, looking at now, who see even see a 14-year tribulation and are still looking at now. They, they see it starting in 2010. Uh, Leland Jones who he, he just stopped uh, doing videos a couple days ago uh, but he has he's been doing it for a long time seven, oh, you know, seven years that's all he's done is work for the Lord he hasn't had a job he hasn't had a house he's been traveling and you know relying solely on faith which is you know it, it's, it, it's incredible to me you know how many of us could actually do that. I mean, he's in a unique cir circumstance, right? I don't think he has a family, which many of us have, so we can't just pick up and leave, you know what I mean? Well, I guess we still could, right? 
anyways, it, it's just a, a testimony to him, but, uh, he has a very impressive, uh, library on his YouTube channel of showing and documenting how and why he's interpreting scripture the way he's interpreting scripture, and, and he's a post-trib believer, and he thinks that we're looking at now as the escape. It's the, the cutoff, the end, we're done, you know, but again, here's the thing, he's looking at now, and he's post-trib. You know, um, there's a lot, a lot of mid-trip believers that are all looking at now. 2017, that sign in the stars, in September 23rd, 2017, um, Revelation 12 sign, or at least partial fulfillment. Some can show full fulfillment um, just slightly after that. Um, it was, I, I think Steve Fletcher just did. A video where he showed the second fulfillment of that in I think it was in October or November I'm not sure either way uh, Tim Foster 405 he's got a YouTube I really like him he does a lot in the community posts he doesn't do too many videos although he does have videos uh, but he does a lot of writing um, and he does a, a really really cool job he's mid-trip and he's showing you know now time frame um, a lot of us, a lot of us watchers, whether pre-mid or post, we're all looking at the May time frame, at this blood moon, you know, or this spring time frame. And I'm not caught up, you know, so if you watch my Tetrad video um, that I did with uh, the Sword of God ministry and Charles and Wu over there. Uh, I have a snippet, my part, in my video. But if you hop over there, you can look back uh, at the full video. And, and they do a really good job of tying things together. But when I did that video, you know, just to go over it briefly, I was I was woken up at 4 o'clock in the morning and told, you know, go and, and do this. And uh, that's I started, I didn't know what I was doing, right? I just... I was told to look at the, the eclipses and the blood moons and I just went for it and just kept working. And 12 hours later, I developed that that spreadsheet. And during that time, I was, it, you know, it was imposed on me that this whole thing has to do with Passover and the blood moons specifically. And while May 26th, there's a, I don't know if it's first Passover, true first Passover, if it's second Passover, you know, I think I really like the second Passover story. And when I thought first Passover was in April and this was in second Passover, <clears throat> um, you know, I really like that story. God's Roadmap to the End talks about it a lot. Uh, Tim Foster talks about it a lot. Leland Jones talked about it. You know, there's, there's quite a few that, that bring up this second Passover and the man on the long journey who comes back at the full moon. Uh, you know, and second Passover being the the time to be celebrated if you're away on a long journey. I think it's really cool how the Lord threw that in back in Exodus when they weren't even asking about that. They're asking about um, what to do. With, you know, if they're exposed to a dead body, and then you know, and the Lord told them, "Will you celebrate second Passover on the second month, fourteenth day, if you've been exposed to a dead body, or you're?" A Way on a far journey, you know. I thought it was cool, and then obviously Jesus quoted that or brought that up. Uh, that man on a far journey um, throughout all three of the Synoptic Gospels, which is really cool. Uh, so, you know, I it was just it was imposed on me that it was all about Passover and all about the blood moons, and no matter how you spin it, whether you believe in pre or post, I think a lot of us, the majority of us, now we, we see multiple rapture events right we, we can see that and and i see it as as three sets of seven a seven 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 um i think that makes a lot of sense whether it's seven years seven years seven months you know something that that is said but has never quite made sense to me um and i've tried informed christians got a good series on the time loop but but god shortening time or else no flesh would survive right I haven't been able to wrap my head around that fully what that means but either way I see multiple harvests um, and I think what you feel or how you're looking at it whether you're pre-mid post if you're looking at now as the escape 
or if you're looking at another three years, three and a half years, or seven years, I think that's that's the Lord showing you your your role, right? I hope that makes sense, right? We, the Lord speaks to us all differently. We all have different uh, understandings, and we all have different attributes that attribute to the body of Christ. We all there's all there's different plans for all of us. So to have, have a one size fits all. No, it's this way. This is what happens. Uh, may not be true for someone else. You know, it's true for you, possibly, right? That's your understanding. Maybe that's a good indication of, of you know, your role that you're going to play. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the role everyone is going to play. Uh, I, you know, I personally, I think I felt this way since last year uh, that I would be here as a harvest worker at least for some time. Um, you know, the Lord showed me that back before I was saved, uh, when my dream started back in 20, let's see, 20, let's see, I moved up 2013, so 2014, uh, which is so cool to see that, you know, I started, a, a seed was planted to me in 2013, maybe I'll get on and do my testimony next video, uh, the seed was planted to me in 2013, 2014, it started to grow, um, and it grew, grew, grew all the way to 2017, and I was baptized, and uh, you know, but I was still in the world and, and uh, 2020, January 2020, I really started to wake up and then when COVID hit, it was just like, yep, sprouted out of the ground, grew six foot in, in two months, right? I wish I was six foot tall, I'm not, but I <laughs> uh, hope you understand the metaphor. So anyways, I see it as 777 and it's all about the blood moons and whether it's first Passover, second Passover... I don't know. I like I said, I lean towards second Passover before because I really like that story. Uh, but the more I think about it and, and and think back to what the Lord was showing me when I was doing that spreadsheet was that it's about Passover, it's about the blood moons and the eclipses for that matter. But I was specifically focused on the blood moons. And that was on Passover 2014. You know, whether that was true Passover or not, I guess that's when it was celebrated. So we'll call it true Passover. But either way, it was Passover and a blood moon. And now here we are, seven years later, right? 777. We're looking at this Passover, possibly second Passover, possibly first. It doesn't matter. It's a Passover and it's a blood moon. So I think that's really cool. Uh, but again, I don't like arguing with people. What the Lord shows you is not what he shows me. It's not what he shows Steve. It's not what he shows Billy Joe or Susie Jane. You know what I mean? Like, just because you have an interpretation and an understanding does not mean that that is the interpretation, the understanding. Do not read into that hand sign. I just did the OK symbol. Okay, I'm, this isn't 666. It's not what I'm showing. Some people will... We'll do that. That's, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. Don't argue with people. We're supposed to unite and come together and reach other people who don't know the Lord, who have fallen away, who are lukewarm, who have, uh, you know, been, been too much a part of the world, who have lost focus on what's truly important, and have lost focus on expecting the Lord to return every day right that's how that's how we're always on our on our best you know not that you have to be on your best the day he comes right because we all have our ups and downs our good and our bad days good and bad weeks you know we go through seasons good and bad months even we have seasons that we go through so you, you know it's not important that you're on your best uh, when he returns because again we all go through seasons but I think this is high time it's high time to really buckle down and put forth effort. You know, I, I, I don't want to get into this argument because this is a salvation issue. And thank the Lord that understanding when the rapture or when the escape occurs is not a salvation issue. So we can throw out ideas, we can talk, and we can experiment and, and uh, ponder. Uh, not so much with salvation, right? It's pretty cut and dry. I don't want to get into that argument, but... You know, there's effort involved. It's not pray a prayer, you're good. 
there is effort involved and uh, you know whether it's pray a prayer and you're good and it'll save you from hell maybe but you're certainly going to be going through tribulation and being refined you know now's the time to put forth the effort now's the time to buckle down and refine yourself before God's forced to refine you through the fire of tribulation that's my thought could be wrong could be right you know Again, what's right for me isn't right for you. It's right for Steve. So, but anyways, just got. I just want to get on here and, and uh, you know talk about that a little bit and just express more so that even though we all have different interpretations of Scripture related to the end times and how we see it playing out and where we're at in in the end time and if it's seven or fourteen years or if we're mid trip pre-trip, post-trip, or if we're already in tribulation or we're not in tribulation, it doesn't matter. What matters is uniting and coming together as the bride, as the body, whichever one you want to believe, again, semantics. If we're looking at now, and I think there's really good indication to show that it is, you know, it's, it's now, it's coming up. I think we'll be leaving and coming back, some of us. Right, like I think I'll be coming back. I'll be going away on training, and then I'll come back. Uh, Tim Foster did a very good article uh, on showing the scripture references to that that we'll be going through. You know, some of us, right? The harvest workers, right? The harvest is plentiful, and that's the harvest of the mag and the multitude, right? Uh, but the workers are few, and so some of us will be going through training and coming back. And I believe that the Lord has shown me that I am one of them. Um, I lose my train of thought. But anyways, oh yeah, here's where we're going. Uh, if you're looking at now, and you can see now happening, let's, or or if you see it happening in three years or seven years, or if you see it now, whether you're pre-med or post, if you see it now, you see it now. And how is Enoch translated? How is Enoch? Quote unquote rapture. Enoch was raptured by faith. He was taken, he was translated by faith. So you have faith that it's going to happen soon. It's coming up. It's around the corner, it's around the bend. And, I, and again, it's not that it's out of wishful thinking. There's so much evidence to, to suggest that it is right around the corner. If you're one of those that are looking and watching and waiting and expecting, he will show up. So, take care, guys. Uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ, uh, oh, I wish I had a uh, repo man on here. Go to your closet. Ask the Father to come into your heart. Ask him to show you who he is, how much he cares for you. You don't need to tell anyone. You don't need to go on, especially boasting. You don't need to tell anyone. You can make it private. You know, the Father rewards those openly who, who seek Him privately. You know what I mean? I butchered that scripture a little bit, but you understand. Seek the Lord. He is coming. He will return. Time is short. Take care.